Hey guys, this is Mr. Vinoy here. Happy May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. For today's special Star Wars theme class for the kids, we did lightsaber class. For you guys, I think we're going to go a little bit more traditional and we're going to do a more traditional sword class. So for the lesson today, you are going to need a weapon. It could be a sword if you have one of those lying around. It could just be a stick. Um, really anything that's about this size. Ideally, you want it so that when you're grabbing the handle, the tip of the sword can go all the way down and brush the floor down here. That's about the right size, but if it's a little bit bigger or smaller, really, you can get on, um, you can vary that quite a bit for today's lesson, okay? But you will need some kind of object you can swing around like a sword. So I'm gonna put this off the side real fast and we have our body warmed up, mostly our arms and shoulders, since this is gonna be hard work on our arms today, especially if you have a heavy weapon. All right, base here, Juliet, can you? So we're jumping jacks, 20 jumping jacks. Go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Good, arm circles four. Backwards. Side to side. Up and down. Twist. Check your wrists. Good, feet about double shoulder width apart. Take one hand, reach down to the opposite toes, and the other hand to the other foot. Back and forth, go. And relax. Okay, let's go ahead and have a seat. We're gonna talk real fast about the weapon and then we'll actually pick it up and start swinging around. Now, most important, if you are going to be using a sword of any kind, whether it be real or fake, um, you gotta make sure you have enough control. Control is incredibly important in the martial arts just for our hands and feet, and even more so if you have a weapon in your hands. So. Right now, practicing probably in your living room or at home, what this means is making sure you control the weapon so you don't hurt anybody or anything around you. So number one, make sure you have lots of space, okay? You don't want to be hitting anything with your weapon, especially not anything fragile. So if there's anything fragile in the room, I recommend relocating it or relocating yourself so that you have plenty of space. Now, also making sure you have nobody around you who you are actually going to hit with your weapon and Thirdly, make sure you are focused and in control of your weapon at all times. If you're going to be swinging something heavy around, you've got to be paying attention to what you're doing. Don't be distracted with little kids running around or anything else going on, okay? Now, I have with me here an aluminum sword. This is not actually a sharp sword. It is a metal sword, but it's not sharp. It's a training sword. However, if you have any other stick or anything like that, that's going to be fine too. But let's talk about the different pieces of the sword. We are doing traditional Korean sword training today. It's gonna look pretty similar to a lot of other sword styles, but obviously with differences. Now, Korean swords are single edge. That means they're sharp on one side and dull on the other side. So first of all, the first piece we're going to be, for now, putting off the side is the scabbard. That's just where the sword goes when you're not using it to both protect the blade from the elements and also to protect yourself from grabbing the blade by mistake and cutting yourself. Now the sword is gonna have a handle down at the bottom. If you don't have a handle on your sword, that is you have just a stick or anything else, use your imagination and pretend you've got a handle down here. That's where you wanna be gripping the sword. You never wanna be touching or grabbing it by the blade. Now having said that, the blade is only sharp on one side for Korean swords and the other side is dull. So it's actually safe to touch the back of the sword. The front is the sharp edge. We're not gonna to touch that. 
even if you don't have a real sword, you should be treating it like it's a real sword. So even if you just got a baseball bat with you, treat it like it's a sword and make sure you're not touching it when you're not supposed to be touching it. If you practice sloppy with a training sword, there's no way you're ever gonna to get to use a real sword. Now, that might not be on your list of things to do. You might not want to be training with a real sword anytime soon. That's okay, let's still treat these like they're real so we can get the proper experience. So one side is edged, one side is safe. We call the back of the sword the spine, and then the front is the edge. Of course, always making sure we're grabbing it down here at the handle. So finally, before we stand up and start swinging this around, let's talk about the grip. You're going to take your right hand and put it on the very top of the handle, right before we get to the blade. And then your left hand is gonna go down at the bottom of the handle, as far down as it can go. We actually want space between our hands. We don't grip them together like a baseball bat. We grip them farther apart because that gives us more control. Control is very important with a sword. So one hand on top, one hand on bottom, space between them like so. All right, let's go ahead and stand up. And we'll get to swing. So one hand on top, one hand on bottom, make sure you have plenty of space between your hands. And now we want to push our arms out as far out in front of us as they can go. With the sword, we want to focus on extending our reach and extending our arms on these cuts. So the whole time, we're going to do our best to lock our arms out straight. As your body gets tired, they tend to bend, you tend to relax, but let's try and keep them out straight even when our arms start getting tired. I'm really pushing my elbows in towards each other and pushing my hands forward as far out as they can go. This is gonna give me maximum reach, and it's also gonna give me the cleanest cut. Now we're gonna rest with the sword about even with our eyes, that is the tip of the sword, even with our eyes, arms locked out straight like so. This is gonna be our ready position with the sword, okay? All right, relax a second, shake it out. For the stance, for now, we're just gonna put one foot in front of the other, a simple stance, okay? Sometimes we might get more fancy with the stances for now. I don't want you to worry about your feet too much, so just put one in front of the other, like our standard fighting stance. So it out in front of us, lock those arms out straight, resting tip even with your eyes. First cut we're gonna do is the vertical cut. So we're gonna bring it back behind our head, reach and point up the ceiling, and then cut down the middle. For now, nice and slow. It's almost like we're casting a fishing line. I really wanna reach and extend at the top and then come down back to where we started. Behind the head, reach and cast with your sword. This is probably the point in our training where you will learn whether or not your ceiling is tall enough for this. So if you're banging your sword on the ceiling at this point, um, maybe find a different place to practice your sword training. Especially if the weather's nice outside, maybe take it out there. Okay, now we're cutting fast, ready? Vertical cut, ha! Toe, set, neck, toss it, yas it, ugo, yodol, aho, yo. Nicely done. All right, next up is our horizontal cut. For the horizontal cut, we're gonna start with the sword resting on our shoulder, like so. Again, the back of the sword is not sharp, that's the spine. I'm resting the spine on my shoulder, not the edge. From here, I'm reaching out and extending to the side and then cutting through my target and stopping here. Touch the shoulder, reach, and cut through. Shoulder, reach, and cut. Again, when I'm cutting, I'm extending my arms as much as they can. I want to stop just past my body here. Especially with this side cut, people get in bad habits of really swinging, whipping the sword across, and we lose control of it. It's going too far out here. We want to be able to cut and freeze our weapon just past our opponent so that we're ready to block and defend ourselves for whatever comes next. You only need to cut through your opponent. So assuming they're the same size as you, that's only this wide, right? So I'm cutting through my opponent, and I'm freezing there. I don't need to cut any farther. There's nobody out here to the side. If there was, I would do another cut, but for now we're cutting just 
in front of us and stopping. They go too far and wide open for their counterattack. So practicing from the shoulder, cut and freeze, good control. Ready? Side cut. Hana. Toe. Set. Net. Toss it. Yes it. Ugo. Yodo. Aho. Yo. Good. And next cut is our diagonal cut. I'm going to start back behind our head just like we did for the vertical cut. I'm going to tip my sword to one side, reach up to that corner, and then diagonal cut all the way pointing to the floor on the opposite side. Behind my head, tip to one side, reach up to that corner, and cut all the way down. Behind the head, tip, reach, cut. Behind the head, tip, reach, cut. Ready? Diagonal cut fast now. Hold up. Toe. Set. Net. Toss it. Yas it. Ugo. Yuro. Aho. Yo. Excellent. So those are going to be our three basic cuts vertical, horizontal, and diagonal. At this point, your arms might start getting tired. Take a second, shake them out. When we're practicing our cuts, do your best to stay vigilant. Keep your cuts nice and long. Keep those arms locked out. If you need to rest your arms, do it between the cuts, but don't get lazy on our cuts. Then we're just building bad habits. All right, let's put those five cuts together. That is two uh, each for the sideways and diagonal. So we're going to start side cut one, side cut two, diagonal cut one, diagonal cut two, and then finish with the vertical cut straight down back to the middle. One slow with me, side, side, diagonal, diagonal, and vertical. Excellent. All five cuts a little bit faster this time. Ready? Hana. Excellent. Same five cuts again. Toll. Hia. Set. Hia. Net. Here. Last one. Toss it. Here. And show. Relax. All right. I say relax your body, but make sure you're never doing anything with a sword you wouldn't do with a real sword. Don't start resting it on the floor. Don't start scratching your back with it. Remember, you have a weapon in your hands, even if for now it's a pretend weapon. Okay, next up we're going to do our draw cut. Now this one is a little bit more complicated, but it's a very important cut. A lot of traditional sword duels did not last very long. It was only one cut, boom, the duel's over. So if both people started from their scabbard, that is on the side of our belt resting here, if both people start in their scabbard and one person is faster on the draw, guess what, that person is gonna win. Now. If you don't have a scabbard for your sword, that's okay. Again, we're gonna pretend. So you're gonna make a circle with your left hand and then put the sword into the circle and grab on right where the handle meets the blade, okay? And then that goes on our left hip, just like so. That's gonna be our chief position for the sword. From here, we're gonna practice our draw cut. So it's cutting straight from the scabbard. The first step is I'm going to turn the blade so that the blade is facing to the side. Resting is either gonna be down or up. There's some debate on which style is best, down or up. Generally, up is more offensive and down is more defensive. For now, it doesn't particularly matter. Either way, we want to rotate the sword so the blade is facing to the side. So I start here, 
When I'm ready to draw, I rotate the blade to the side. Take your right hand, reach over, grab the handle as close to your other hand as you can, as close to the blade. I'm going to step with my right foot. Here, let me do it mirror for you guys. So I'm using my left side, but you guys should be using your right side. So right hand, grab the sword, point the blade to the side, take a step forward. Right now I'm pointing the handle on the diagonal this way. That's the direction I'm gonna draw the sword all the way out. And then finally I'm gonna to cut to the front, aiming for the neck. Again, put in your scabbard. Now your hand has the magical ability to open. Scabbards don't usually do that. So do your best to keep your hands closed. And when you draw it out, it's got to come all the way and clear your hand before you try to cut. You don't want to get in the habit of cutting early and cutting through your scabbard. All right, turn the blade to the side, reach over, grab the handle, step, draw, and cut. Good. And we step back. A lot of little things going on here, so be patient with yourself. Take your time. Make sure we get all these details in here. Turn the blade to the side. Reach over, grab the handle. Step. Draw. I'm not drawing straight ahead. I'm drawing on the diagonal. And then cut to the middle. We're aiming to the neck. Okay, let's practice that a few times on your own. Take your time. I'm not going to walk you through it. I want you to go at your own pace. In the hangway, you can speed things up a little bit, try and keep it smooth. Okay, excellent job. Now I'm gonna try it a little bit faster, same thing. Put in your scabbard. When I say go, we're gonna try and draw cut as fast as we can. Still try and get as many of those details in as you can, but obviously if this is your first time working with your sword, you might not get all of them, that's okay. Just do your best for now, let's focus on speed. Ready? Draw cut, ha -da! And put it away. To. Set. Net. Last one, toss it. And put it away. Excellent work. All right, shake out your arms real fast. Next up, we're gonna learn a couple, in fact, we're just gonna do one block with the sword today. We don't do a whole lot of blocking with our swords because sword fights are so much about the offensive. If you cut somebody in half, you don't need to block their attack. So we don't do a lot of blocking with the sword, but we're gonna learn one um, and then a, a counter attack to go along with it. So let's go back to our regular grip, right hand on top, left hand on bottom, arms all the way up straight. So we're gonna work on a high block. This is gonna come up, above our head, our hands either come to one side or come to the other side. If I bring them up on one side, we call this the 11 block because our arms make the shape of an 11. If I bring my hands up on the other side, we call it the X block because my hands make the shape of an X. Either way, whether we're doing 11 or X, the blade is always above our head. Never block your head with your hands or the handle because you don't want your fingers getting hurt when you're trying to block something. Blocking here with the blade, one side or the other. Now again, either way, you also want the blade angled slightly down, pointed to the floor. 
not flat and not pointing up at the ceiling, but angled down the floor. This is so if an enemy sword clashes with mine, they're going to then slide down and away from me, so I'm safe. If we keep it flat, we get in this showdown with their sword on top of mine, they're pushing, 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 eventually they might win that battle. But with the blade angle, it's gonna hit and then deflect off to the side where I'm gonna be safe. We angle down and not up so that it doesn't slide down and chop our fingers off. Angle down this way, that way their blade deflects down. Ready? Block up on one side. 11. Hands on one side of your head. The blade is above your head. The tip is pointed slightly downward. Okay. Good. Now X block, other side. 11. X. 11. X. 11. X. 11. X. Last one, 11. And X. Excellent. All right, now I want to put it all together for a block and counter attack. We're also going to add in some footwork with this as well. So we're going to be blocking to our, we're going to block to our left side. So I'm stepping to my left and I'm blocking to my left. My left foot steps, I block up above my head. This is to keep ourselves safe with our block, but the step is also important here. If I can get out of the way without even having to block it, I'm safe that way as well. So I step and block, same time. Ready? And go. Good, now from here, we wanna keep it, our hands on this side of our body, bring the blade behind our head, and diagonal cut, so counter tap. At the same time we do that diagonal cut, we're also going to slide our back foot to help place our body forward a little bit. This diagonal cut, depending on how close we are, can be aimed to the wrists. If we cut their wrists, they lose their sword, we win the fight, or we can aim to their neck. So I'm the opponent, I'm attacking you here, you're going to the left and you're blocking and then either counterattacking to the wrist or counterattacking diagonal to the throat. Okay, let's try it together. Ready? Step to your left, block, right foot slides, diagonal cut, and step back. Ready? Block and cut. And reset. Block and cut. And reset. One more block and cut. And reset. Good. Now I want to go to the other side, to your right. So this time, stepping with your right foot, hands are on your right. We're doing the X block and then diagonal cut as we slide that back foot. Ready? Step to your right, behind your head, diagonal cut as you slide that left foot. Step and cut and reset. Step, cut and reset. One more. Step, cut and reset. Good. Practice on your own. Take your time. If you're getting a hammer, you can pick up the speed. Practice one way, block cut, and then practice the other way, block cut. Just go back and forth at your own pace.
Excellent job. And relax. Okay, so the sword is a very complicated weapon to use. There are entire, entire styles of martial arts that focus entirely on sword training. Our Tung Sudo Karate is primarily punching, kicking, blocking. However, we do use some weapons with our training. We use swords for our, usually our advanced belts only, along with staff and then sometimes other weapons as well. So this is definitely not a comprehensive guide to the sword, but it's a brief overview to show you guys some of the cool parts about this weapon and do something different for a special made for class. Okay? All right. Well done. We're going to leave it at that. Let's go ahead and face here. Should we up? Come here. Right hand up. Hana, tool set. Tongsu. May the fourth be with you.